you learn a lot of things in the Navy. And some of the things you didn't even think were going to be known to you until you're in a particular situation and it comes to fruition. I was over in Iraq and Afghanistan for three years. I wasn't in country that whole time. I was stationed in Bahrain, but I spent a lot of time there. And a lot of big wigs come over and, and they want to go see, see the troops, military big wigs. And, and the biggest wig of them all is the uh, Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy. And this guy's a very good friend of mine. And uh, he came over a couple of times, but I remember this one time he came over and he says, I want to go see the troops. I go, I know, I got it all scheduled. Well, we're going to go here, going to go there. All the planes are lined up, all the helicopters, all the people, it's all lined up, we're good. He's like, okay. Now, when you travel around in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, you're kind of at the whim of a lot of different factors of whether you're going to get to this place or that place at a certain date and time. But when you're with the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, uh, eh, he usually works out pretty darn close. This one particular evening, it was kind of late, it was about 10 o'clock at night. And to tell you the truth, I really don't even know where we were. But we were next to an airstrip that we had just built, you know, a couple of weeks before that. And it had a tent and it had a, a little Air Force guy, a couple of Air Force guys were running, it had folding chairs, that was the terminal. <laughs> and, uh, and me and the Mick Pond were trying to get home. I remember we were trying to get home, it was our final leg and our plane was there, but the little Air Force guy comes in, he goes, Master Chief, uh, you got a second? I go, yeah, yeah, what's up? He goes, um, it's gonna be a little while before we can get you guys on the airplane. I'm like, dude, don't worry about it. Cause you know, we don't want them falling all over themselves. We, we, we'll, we're fine. I said, don't worry about it. Take your time, whatever's going on. And he comes back a little while later. He goes, um, okay, we're ready to put you guys on board now. It took us a little while. We were, we were loading an angel. An angel? I didn't know what an angel was. I know now. It's a fallen soldier, airman, sailor, marine. We got on a C-5A Galaxy. This is the largest airplane we have. And it was empty, except for two seats for us, way in the front, and the angel in the back. I remember I got up. I put my hand on the flag, said a prayer. But I looked underneath it and it had a number, number 966. This is the 966th guy to lose his life. And I went back and sat down. Now, flash forward about 14 years. I'm teaching my class in ROTC. I get a young lady in there. She's all ready to play the game. I'm all excited about having her. And I get an email from her mom. And the email says, this is my daughter. Her dad died in the war. He was a Marine. She sent me a picture of her dad and a picture of her daughter in the ROTC uniform. Looked like brother and sister. I'm not saying 966 was him, but it could have been.